looking through some of the details of the Rome Statute, and I mean, this is where your legal expertise is incredibly valuable because there is a whole um, series of laws and documents that sort of underline and sort of uh, provide the foundation for, for what the ICC does. And the point that you made just now, Erin, about uh, the conference you, you attended last year where the issue of uh, rape as, as a war crime was discussed, that's a, 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 an aspect of jurisprudence that the ICC has developed of identifying uh, uh, s systemic rape as a, as a mechanism of, of, of a war crime. And that's something that, that has really helped in the fight against uh, uh, abuses of human rights against women and young children in particular in, in war situations. And you know, those are things, those are the, the benefits of the ICC that, uh, that people ignore at their peril. Mm. And I mean, sexual assault and, and sexual violence is not isolated to women and children during mm. war. That absolutely is, you know, fact. Indeed. And I mean, I think what's going to be interesting is we're having a guest on tomorrow who was involved with the UN in Darfur in 2003 when the conflict really kind of came to, began to come to a head. Mm. And he has documentation that the UN was privy to on the scope of violence, genocide, wholesale, you know, forced removal of people and destruction of villages. Mm. That is what is, you know, put at the foot of al-Bashir and mm. kind of brings all of these questions um, up to a head. I just want to touch there, Lawson, on the four core crimes that are listed in the Rome Statute. And, and perhaps you can tell us where these resonate and overlap with the values and the principles of the South African Constitution, um, coming from CASAC as you do. So the four core crimes that, that we signed up to, to hold people to account for are genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, and crimes of aggression. Where do those crimes, which the ICC seeks to prosecute, and hold people to account for instigating or kind of encouraging. Where do those resonate with the South African Constitution? Well, uh, fr they, they resonate f uh, primarily from our Bill of Rights, which mm -hmm. which outlaws uh, uh, all sorts of all these sorts of uh, 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 practices against human rights, but also from customary international law, from uh, or in, uh, uh, the, the common law of international law, if you like which is part of international law, whether it's in a treaty or not. So we, were, we are bound by these, uh, by these provisions, uh, whether or not we, we withdraw from the Rome Statute or not, because these form part of the basis of, of agreed international law. And in terms of our constitution, as the Constitutional Court has said, we are bound by our uh, international obligations that stem from the rights that are in our own Bill of Rights. So we are bound in, in, in any case to these issues and, to, and to, to take action against genocide, war crimes and so on. Uh, what we would lose by withdrawing from the Rome Statute is being able to use the m mechanisms of the International Criminal Court to prosecute those crimes. Yes. That's what we would lose. 